Don't call her cute. Don't call her feisty. She's a rebel. She is nasty. She is brave. She is a honey sweetie sugar pie baby. And don't you ever say that she was well behaved. Don't you ever say that she was well behaved. And don't you ever say that she was well behaved. And we're back, <laughs> baby. Um, I'm going. I think I'm going to go to like a sample sale tomorrow for like moleskin notebooks and uh um and like this and like this like fancy candle brand and like these fancy water bottles because i'm like ooh, i want like a fun notebook and like a nice candle i love fun notebooks i know and they're like cheap we went to the uh i guess it was the jp morgan library Mm. Um, Shaki and I did once and we I mean we didn't actually go into the library because that you have to pay money for but we went to the gift shop which is free <laughs> unless you buy something but there were so many notebooks that I was like oh, I want this notebook and I want I this notebooks. notebook and I would write so much if I had this notebook I love notebooks me too it's like it's just like it's so full of potential mm. it's so fun I'm almost finished with with mine and Ooh. then I have another one on the I have like one that I take with me for a travel and one that I keep at home that's smart yeah because it's it's a size it's a size issue I like I I actually kind of was liking those like cheap the one that I just finished which was like a cheap like three ring or like three hole like mm-hmm. need one subject college notebook I like that I like a notebook that has um rings mm. and thick lines so this one that I'm using now is not going to be ideal but hopefully I can when Make it I, work. When I was younger. Even though it's fancier. I mm. always thought, I always wanted the Harriet the Spy notebook. Oh, uh, yeah. Like with composition the black, notebook. like the black and white cover. Composition notebook. Yeah. And I thought those were so cool. Did you not have those in your Well, life? so I remember like when my mom would buy, like when we would get our school supplies, uh-huh. the, those were always like 30 cents more expensive. Than what? Than just like a notebook that was just like red on the front or just like a regular oh, notebook. Weird. I always thought of those as like the cheapest ones. And I always just wanted her to spring for the composition notebook yeah. and then like one year it happened and I was like <gasps> I'm like I Harriet the Spy. I dressed up, as, dressed up as Harriet the Spy once for Halloween before the movie came out just based on the book. It was back when I read books and uh, no one got it. It was pretty cool. Really? <laughs> no one got it. God, I um, loved that movie. Yeah. I Rosie the book in the movie so good yeah and uh Julie recently was trying on outfits at a Buffalo exchange in Brooklyn and uh Julie she, Mitchell Julie Mitchell and there was a composition notebook dress like just <gasps> in that pattern but oh she didn't God. get it yeah I really liked it in her Instagram story but then I was like haven't been able to get there but it's probably gone now Ugh. I yeah. want that. I know. Yeah, there was something about that pattern to me that just seemed so cool. It was cool. It was very fun. It's a very cool pattern. And I love, I mean, like, I remember, I feel like Harriet the Spy just, like, had everything that I wanted at that yeah. time. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. this idea of, like, being an outsider, but, like, observing mm-hmm. and just, like, watching. And then everybody's mean to her, mm-hmm. but, like, she kind of deserves it. Like, she's just been, like, writing shit about everybody. Yeah, she's like a like a in retrospect girl yeah it's like a voyeur she's just talking shit about everybody in her notebook yeah it's the original burn book yes <laughs> i is. really want to see mean girls on broadway i i do too i heard someone told me it wasn't very good well that person is wrong was. I, I want to see it so bad it's so hard to get tickets i mean i i i want i just i really liked mean girls i love a good musical that's it's everything I want <laughs> I know I want to go so bad well I'm on like I've have you been entering the lottery to get tickets no I've never is that can you do it online yeah I think mm. you well actually okay there's two options you can do it online but it's really hard to get there then they do have a thing like a thing on Wednesdays it's like on Wednesdays we wear pink and it's like mm. if you wear a pink a visible pink article of clothing a clothing you can get there early on a Wednesday and like stand in line and potentially get the tickets but i'm never free on a wednesday to do that so yeah and i just got my first pink shirt although actually i mean yeah but you could wear that pink wig you could wear anything yeah actually i do have a wednesday coming up when the kids i babysit are out of town um so uh let's remember to put that in my calendar because i could maybe try and stand in line early for us and maybe get us some ticks okay 
some cheap ticks. Yeah. Wednesdays are my longest dog walking days. Mm-hmm. Well, usually, you just stay in the city. We'll get drunk and then we'll go to the play. Great. I love all of those things. Sounds good, huh? Not okay. staying in the city, but <laughs> no, I, I like everything else. I know. Well, we'll just we'll maybe you'll have a little. You won't drink a Red Bull, but you'll drink like some other more reasonable <laughs> form of caffeine in the beginning of the day. What I like to do have is. You, do you ever drink yerba mate? No. Ooh, I love. But yerba I used mate. to it's when nice I buzz. studied abroad in Cuba. I used to drink a soda that was uh, sabor de mate. Ooh, the taste I probably of mate. Had, probably had yerba mate in it. Was it I like? Think, I mean, it was just like soda, oh, okay. but that like tasted like mate. That sounds great. It doesn't taste that good. No, I mean it was much. It was with a lot of sugar. Sugar. Yeah, the ones that I like the like yerba mate teas, and most tea I like without sugar. That's for mate for yerba mate. That blue thing. Oh yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Shaki most tea one. I like without sugar, but yerba mate is a little tough. It's like I'll I will drink it, but the one I love the iced teas that they that like is in that yellow bottle, and they're like have they're just like a little sweet. And mm-hmm. they have like the pomegranate flavor and stuff. Those are like my favorite. And yerba mate, you get very like it's a nice buzz. Like I, I'm weird. I can't drink coffee. Coffee just like makes me jittery and then like have diarrhea. Like there's no. I like, love the diarrhea. I know everyone says that. I don't get it. <laughs> it makes my stomach hurt and it makes me like jittery for like several hours and then that's it. It's well, not you gotta productive. ease into it. And I also don't like the taste of it. Sure. It's just not for it's me. It's okay. But I like tea and I and then but sometimes a black tea is not enough. And so then I discovered your mate and that really helped me because that is like that will get you there, but it's not it doesn't make you jittery. It just wakes you up. Yeah, I had a Spanish professor my freshman year of college who drank yerba mate every day and we were oh, like God. You're from Boston. Like, <laughs> off. I, I know. I try not to drink it every day. We did buy it on like we bought it like on Amazon or something like the, the individual packets. And I bring tea uh-huh. with me to work, and I'll usually I'll try and bring I'll bring like some Earl Grey and some yerba mate, and I try to mostly do the Earl Grey. But if I'm gonna if I know I'm gonna have a super long day after, I'll I'll drink yeah. yerba mate instead. Well, I had but another I try and limit myself because it's I think I could get really addicted. Yeah. to Yeah. Well, and then I had another Spanish professor who was from Bolivia who chewed on cacao leaves <laughs> and we're oh like, my god fuck yeah what that's <laughs> another level hell yeah <laughs> he oh was man. like i'll bring it in for you guys and we're like this is Aww. too late and we all have cocaine my cousin just texted me that she bought the dress for her wedding oh exciting oh very exciting my current i have a group text right now i always have a group text with my family and uh currently a lot of controversy because my brother sent an article about how there's a pizza place in New Jersey where my mom is from. Yeah. uh, That is using some sort of like filtration machine that uh, turns their water into like New York water. It's like New York filtration (laughs) That's awesome to make pizza. And my mom is livid because she believes that New Jersey water and New Jersey pizza is just as good, if not better. Ew, no. She's... (laughs) wrong i'm really sorry new jersey water is disgusting it's really gross it's disgusting it smells bad it smells like methane it's awful i agree i mean i'm sure that the, <laughs> it's the pizza it's fine the pizza's fine because pizza is always fine but it's not better pizza is not always fine that's true coming from kentucky pizza is not that's always very fine. true but like I, it, i'd say it's always fine it's not always it's good. always edible like, i will eat melted cheese on bread with yeah. sauce in uh-huh. any form with a little um, throw a little garlic in there and, <laughs> yeah i mean butter. even if you don't like i will eat it um just so melt some cheese on bread in any form and i will eat it but yeah and so it's like okay whatever fine but like the water is disgusting my mom is so protective of her new jersey that's New Jersey. Did I tell you? Embarrassing. I don't my know dad, if I mentioned My dad it. is kind of too, actually. We recently went to Princeton because Louie's mom was like in town for a wedding. So we just drove like to and from Princeton mm-hmm. in the day, which was silly. And uh, I asked my parents like where we should go because my mom went to Princeton and and my mom was like, oh, there's no good food there. And my dad was like, it's not that bad. <laughs> there's a couple places. It Did I tell funny. you my mom claimed and I think she kind of did this just to poke at Shacky, but that New Jersey is the only place with real diners. 
New Jersey's is famous for their diners. They are famous for their diners, but Shaggy was like, you're telling me there are no diners in New York. Yeah. No diners. No. And she was like, not real. Di-. And then I think she was just like, yeah, she knew that she got being, a rise out of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which like, thanks, mom. He's <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend. Be, um, ni- be gentle to his ego. I know. I was like, <laughs> I appreciate that you feel so comfortable with him. Yeah. That, that <laughs> and you, you feel so him. confident in our relationship <laughs> that you can just be you. Yeah. But that's stop. really funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I'm so hungry now. I'm excited. It's coming. I know we're going to eat so good soon. It'll be good. My dad always said hunger is the best sauce. No, sauce is the best sauce. No, but it like things taste better when you're really hungry. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's like a real that's something his He's mom right. would say cuz of like, you know, the famine because and of shit. Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> and because they don't have good sauces there. <laughs> the only yeah, good sauce yeah, yeah. is hunger. Um, I, um, I feel like we can kind of just dive right in this week. Honestly, I don't yeah, have so much banter. We don't banter. have so much banter because we, we just, just bantered <laughs> and we're both so hungry and you're drunk on wine. I'm not drunk. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm just I, not that came out sober. In a, that came out with stink on it and I'm sorry. I didn't mean okay. it to. It's okay. I, I'm jealous. I think that's probably why I'm like, ugh. I wish I was also drunk on wine, but see mom, I don't drink and drive. So I'm just drinking water, and it's very boring. <laughs> <laughs> we have sparkly water, too, if you'd like. Ooh, and ginger okay. beer. That's okay. okay. I'll just drink water. Um, okay. But we'll get going. I'm Ariel Elias. Oh, I'm Molly Rubin Long. This is Well Behaved. It's a podcast about women in history who you probably haven't heard of. Because you erased her. You erased her. You did this. And yet she persisted. You're responsible. Um, so we will each discuss a woman from history that we... <laughs> Did some loose research on this week. Super loose. Watch the YouTube uh, video. Ooh, that's always the best when there's a YouTube video. Uh, I read a couple of a couple of websites. Um, Mine, I think, is like kind of well known. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. I didn't know her, but Shaki. I mean, Sh- I think a lot oh, of I these are. I mean, honestly, there's sometimes I come across women and 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 I know that they're well known, but uh-huh. I don't know them, and so I'm yeah. mostly just embarrassed. And then I'm like, maybe I should just do them. Maybe we should start opening it up to that because I mean, I, if I don't know that much, if I've just heard the name, but I I, I yeah. couldn't give you a lot of details about their life, like I want to know about them. Honestly, that's kind of how. But I, there are so many unknown women too, so I don't know. I mean, we can mix it up. I that's like kind of how I like had the idea for this podcast was like. I there like somebody just like mentioned a woman and I was like yeah I know that name I don't know they were just like famous suffragist blah 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 yeah. blah blah and I was like I don't know who that is like I don't, I don't know, know what she did also it's like not like I, I'm necessarily doing the best from this because just in the last episode I was like oh yeah that's like that one woman we did whose name I forget <laughs> I forget all of their names <laughs> I'm but I very also, bad at names I also forget names of people who I've like had conversations yeah. with 15 times it's also just good to know the gist and then if like someone brings it that's what you know what we live in the age of Google if if I hear that I can be like wait who is that again and I'll be like oh I know all about them mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. just um you know it's and also good to, to see the to see the patterns and maybe you are a person who can just absorb information really incredibly that's not me also stop naming your kids mary yeah, we have had too many marys too many marys that's true you know molly is the irish form of mary is it really yeah i just learned that um Giannis is the whatever form of john of feta cheese no <laughs> oh of john really mm-hmm. i mean it just means john oh wow. that's liam is the irish form of william Ah. I've always liked the name Liam. Yeah. I don't know why. Because anyway. Liam Nelson? Nielsen? Neeson? Neeson. <laughs> no, not because of Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. I guess my dad's name is William, and mm-hmm. I like that it's like the Irish form. Because I don't think I'd ever want to like name a child after my parents directly. That seems a little too on the nose. So it yeah. seems like a nice like uh, one step removed. It'd be cool to name a girl Liam. Ooh, that'd be cool, huh? Yeah, I love. I think that's so cool when girls have genders, boys' names. Yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway, well, we'll get right into it. <laughs> this woman has a very cool name. Her name What's is her name? Lucretia. That's, that Lucretia is a name. Lucretia Mott. It's a. It's a. That's a unique one. We haven't had a Lucretia yet. Um, Lucretia Mott was born in 1793. She was the daughter of a Nantucket sea captain. <laughs> Sounds like okay. a. I'm about to start a poem. Um. <laughs> She was raised Quaker, and uh, when she was like in her 
early teen years, she went to a Quaker boarding school in the Hudson Valley of New York. Is this Mott's applesauce? No, no, that would be sick though. (laughs) No, it's not a different Mott. I mean, maybe they're related. I don't know. I don't know the story of the applesauce, Um, which by the way, I've been getting really into applesauce lately. Really? Not really into it, but like the kid I babysit eats it. And then sometimes (laughs) after lunch there, I'll be like, I really want to make like like toast with butter and honey which is like my favorite thing but i'm trying to like not do that so i'll just have like some applesauce as a treat do you ever put toast with applesauce on it Ooh, i've never done that is that good i don't know try it <laughs> i will but the point is we're i'm trying to like eat less carbs but it's not oh, really i thought working. you were trying to eat less butter i mean both are not great okay um, we'll get rid of the butter but keep the toast oh, none of the three things are good um anyway but so um so her family moves to Philadelphia and another teacher at the school. Oh, sorry. She becomes a teacher. She becomes an a, a, a assistant teacher while she's okay. after she graduates from the board, the Quaker boarding school. And then another teacher from the school named James Mott follows her to Philly and they get married in 1811. Wait, so. Was she married or was she born Lucretia Mott? No, I forget her. Okay. I right, didn't write fine. down her. I, I also did that sure. for we Mary uh, last week. But I just for, I didn't write down maiden names, which is bad. I should do that. Um, anyway, but in 1811, uh, they get married. She also had six kids, like Yuri from last week. Yeah. Um, and one of them died in infancy, but the rest of them uh, survived to adulthood. Her husband was in the cotton and wool trade, which will come up later. Okay. Um, is he Jewish? No. Jews were really into the cotton Oh, really? No, I do not think he was Jewish. She was and also Quaker. They were both Quaker. Ah, okay. they went to that right, school. Right, right. And Mott isn't exactly like <laughs> the Jewish name. Um, so after her Mott first... Scene. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> after her first son died, she became even more religious and joined the Quaker ministry. She was um, always said to have been like a great speaker, a great orator, and a great minister. Um, and... Something that's pretty cool, which I did kind of know this, but just a reminder that Quakers, like, have always been woke as fuck. Um, Mm -hmm. They advocated against slavery and even went so far as to boycott slavery products. So because of that, because her husband supported her, sounds like her husband was, like, a pretty cool guy in terms of, like, he treated women like people, which is, like, really a rarity in history. Um, So because he supported her and supported this cause, he got out of the, he got out of the the cotton cotton part of the cotton and wool. He just Mm, did wool. mm -hmm. And so they would boycott cotton. They would boycott um, cane sugar, all of the slavery produced products, which is pretty cool. Um, They had a lot of like uh, threats of violence and stuff like that for these beliefs. It was not like, Everyone wasn't like, cool, we're, yeah. that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. Um, in 1833, she helped found the Philadelphia Female Anti-Slavery Society and was its president. Um, once the national branch of that organization allowed women in, she was also active in the national branch as well. And as you can imagine, activism of this kind for women was not common. Like, even though there was an association, it like was not a lot of people. Um involved in it oh one example of like the violence is in 1838 a mob destroyed the newly built meeting hall for the abolitionists abolitionists in philadelphia and she along with like other white and black women linked arms to exit safely and get away from the crowd and even this mob even like they would after that they came to her home and they came to african-american institutions and apparently when they came to her home she was like waiting for them in the parlor like she was ready to face them but then they like didn't somehow her friend like got them to leave or something so she never had to huh. luckily but she um, was ready but she was ready she was sitting in the parlor and she was a badass know, do you know why quakers in particular were like progressive like, I don't is there know. Something about their That's ideology a great question. I, you know what? I should have looked more into the history of, of Quakerism. Um, I don't know how that developed, but they've always been. I think I think that they're like st- strongly nonviolent, which I guess right. a lot of religions claim to be, but mm-hmm. they actually are. Yeah. Um, okay. In like anti-war. I mean, I know that like when you're a Quaker, you can you can like get out of a draft if you prove that you're Quaker because mm-hmm. it's again, or or you can be like in the medical tent or whatever. Like mm-hmm. you're not you because of religious freedom like you 
shouldn't you don't have to Got it. kill someone there was a, a boy who i went to middle school with whose family were quakers yeah i have friends i have friends from um like growing up family friends who went to a friend's school like a quaker mm-hmm. school they weren't they're jewish but they would always talk about how they would have like morning circle and they would like sit in silence every morning for a little bit and like reflect on things and it was like very weird it seems cool I don't know. Sounds meditative. Sounds it does, nice. yeah. And they're different from the Shakers, right? Oh yeah, the Shakers okay. are very different. The yeah. Quaker, which is funny. They're no, yeah, yeah okay. they're very different. No, the Quakers are like peaceful, progressive folks. And the Shakers are like, we don't have sex. Yeah, the Shakers. They're are actually cuckoo. so there are two Shaker villages left in the U.S. and one of them is like an hour away from my hometown, and we used to go there for field trips in all Kentucky? the time. That yeah. makes sense. One's in Pennsylvania, one's in Kentucky. Wow. Yeah, that that works. Yeah, that yeah, checks yeah. out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay. So, sorry. no, no, it's only totally fine. Keep it coming. Riffing it up. Um, anyway, so in 19, or excuse me, 1840, she uh, goes to the World Anti-Slavery Convention in London with her husband. What a weird convention. I know. I was like, what are they? Like, <laughs> it's like Comic-Con, but for yeah. abolition. What are those booths? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think it's more like, uh, probably more like meetings and conferences, yeah. but definitely weird. Um so they go to this thing and she is denied entry because they do not allow women in this anti-slavery convention. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So instead... Not hypocritical she, whatsoever. No, it's truly like how they do not see the irony is nuts. Although there was like a lot of uh, white feminists who were anti... For uh, sure. Who were not... Absolutely. Who didn't care about abolition. So it's it goes mm-hmm. all, all ways. But anyway, in this no, way, right. she was like on the right side of history 100%, which is pretty cool. Great. Um, so anyway, so she's at this conference. She's like, what the heck? I can't even go inside. I traveled all the way to London. So she gathers up a bunch of the women who were like rejected from the conference outside of the conference hall and starts preaching about female equality, like yes. right outside the hall. And uh, one of the women who's outside and doesn't get let in is Elizabeth Caddy Stanton. So that they become friends cause, since they're kicked out. And be, and it's kind of interesting because they became friends on this trip. They decided to, when they got back to the U.S., they were like, we got to set up a conference for women. And that's how the Seneca Falls Convention was formed, which is like one of the uh, like yeah. moments that sort of birthed the, uh, you know, white f- female uh-huh. suffrage movement. Um so it's kind of interesting that they like kicked them out and then they were like, well, th- we're going to change history ourselves. Yeah. Um, and like, I, I didn't realize know. that her, that Elizabeth Cady Stanton's husband, Henry Stanton was also an abolitionist. So they were um, also if they in don't that let you circle. At the table, create Make your, your own. own table, bitch. Um, anyway, so <laughs> after London, she gets back and she's like, goes on this speaking tour. She goes all across the like Northern cities. She even goes to a couple of slave, uh, owning states and she sits down with slave owners in Virginia and Maryland and talks to them about the morality of slavery. Um, I don't think she changes their mind, but anyway, um, she mm-hmm. even speaks. It's, has a real, like, uh, it's like when Trevor Noah sat down with Tommy Lauren, right? It's like, Lauren. Yeah. yeah. Lauren. Lauren. But I mean, I guess it's, it is like that, but, I, but you're kind of like, I don't know, maybe they'll listen to this white lady, but they yeah. Didn't. I mean, look, I appreciate that. I feel like her it's heart tough. was in the right place, yeah. Yeah. but also, like, I don't think that you can talk logic and sense into yeah. somebody who thinks it's fine to own people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, they, their their morality is is skewed for sure. Um, so she also has like private audience with President John Tyler, who is a president I had never didn't heard know of. he was a president. Um, <laughs> never in my I had to Google. They said President John Jonathan Tyler. Jonathan Taylor Tyler. I was like president of what? <laughs> I was like, wait, did I misread the president of an oh no, president of the United States? He was the tenth president. Isn't that crazy? I feel Truly like there did never, are... never heard that. Name okay, because there have been forty-five presidents. I feel like there are at least twenty that I have could never heard never, of. Yeah, I could never name. Couldn't name. I mean, now you know John Tyler. It was also a very generic name. Mm-hmm. It's easy to forget, especially for us who forgets name. But anyway, she talks to him. He's very <laughs> impressed with her. Whatever. So, in eighteen forty-eight, she and uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton are you know true to their word. They create the Seneca Falls meeting that summer. Um, And they discuss all kinds of issues, women's issues, suffrage, equality in marriage, women's property rights, rights to earnings. Rights um, to not be property. Exactly. Rights to not be property. Uh, Divorce reform, because at the time it was very difficult to get a divorce and men almost always got custody of the children, Mm. which is interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So divorce was like even more awful back then. Um, 
they uh oh yeah this was something about her so while she's like an activist and whatever she still like was the head of her household apparently although it sounds like her husband was cool like i wouldn't be surprised if he like shared the responsibilities oh. hopefully went down on her but also like share the responsibilities but i don't know um but there's this quote that i found which is like so infuriating but it's like a uh, quote she is proof that it is possible for a woman to widen her sphere without deserting it deserting it okay okay, uh, okay i'm gonna say that again yeah. she is proof that <laughs> she is proof that it is possible for a woman to widen her sphere without dis deserting it why do you keep saying deserting it i'm not even drunk i think you're hungry i'm so hungry like Um, dessert dessert it (laughs) dessert my mouth okay um yeah without deserting what does that mean like she so basically it was like she's saying women can have it all so Mm -hmm. you can widen your sphere like do stuff outside the house uh-huh. but that doesn't mean you have to I- ignore your sphere Got you can it. stay in it we could, it was basically like old-timey women can't have it all um which was like ugh. right i feel like okay. so often with these there's like another pattern i notice is like so often we get these quotes about these women that are like that are like see she was a woman but she wasn't a total idiot and it's like it's like, it's like these there's so many backhanded compliments about uh-huh. these women because it's like society was just like so confused by them yeah so, society I, gave all us the time we see this all these backhanded compliments and so women uh compensated by coming up with the humble brag exactly <laughs> exactly um in 1850 she wrote uh a paper called discourse on women which i also tried to read but was like nah but basically Man. it outlined her feminist philosophy she talked about how uh women's limited roles in society were not because they were inferior but because they didn't have education which is like duh but that wasn't Mm -hmm. a duh statement at the time um she wanted uh economic equality like equal economic opportunities and also equal political status which included suffrage um so then in 1857 they moved to a country house like a farm outside of philadelphia they get away from the city and they Mm -hmm. made it a stop on the underground railroad Oh, cool. So that was pretty cool. Um, nice. Practicing what you preach. Yeah. And then like, so that, I guess it was an underground, uh, it was part of the underground railroad for like five or so years. And then on January 1st, 1863, the day of the Emancipation Proclamation, she called it a day of jubilee. So she was like very committed. Mm-hmm. She really put her money where her mouth yeah. was in terms of suffrage stuff. Or, excuse me, in terms of anti-slavery stuff and suffrage stuff. But anyway, after the Civil War, a lot of... Um, abolitionists were like, okay, cool, we did it, done. <laughs> or like, like everything is solved. <laughs> as many tr- presidents would say, mission accomplished. <laughs> um, <laughs> and she nobody was like, nobody has ever regretted those words, yeah. not once. She was like, no, idiots, <laughs> it's not done yet. So she began advocating for African American suffrage and aid for freed people. In 1864, she helped found. Um, the co-ed Quaker Institute called Swarthmore College, which is a college I feel like I definitely vid- yeah. visited when I was looking at colleges. Is it an all women's? I th- well, it's, it said it was co-ed. Oh, I don't think that's one of the all women's that. ones. Sorry. No, I think it, maybe it was at some point, but I don't think so. I think it might be like near, I think okay. it might be like in a consortium with some, I don't know, whatever. But she founded a, a university. It was pretty cool. College rather. Um, in 1866, she was elected the head of the American Equal Rights Association despite her health starting to kind of falter. Mm. And I had vaguely remembered this from like U.S. history, but the American Equal Rights Association was basically this like women's suffrage association that was created and then very shortly was split into two groups. Um, mm. Like they had a they had a fight and the fight was basically over the 15th Amendment, which the 15th Amendment was to give black men the right to vote. And Mm. some of the some so it's split into two organizations one was the american women's suffrage association so one is the american women's suffrage association one is the national women's suffrage association they didn't Ooh, have very clever so names nice. one's which, american one's national which was for so, so like baseball i'll break it down the national league so and the, the american, american league. one yeah the american league was um in favor of pushing so basically the argument wasn't like should black men have the right to vote or not but the argument was should we go ahead and push the 15th Amendment through Congress with the assumption that 
the Republican Party, once they push this through, because remember the, in history, the Republicans were the good guys. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, when they when they push this through, like, OK, then the next step will be black women, women. specific and white, white women. women. Oh, okay. No, because the 15 the men was just black men. OK, so they're saying, yeah. OK, well, we're going to support them pushing this, even though it doesn't include white women. Got it. Or any or women. black women. Right. It doesn't include any women, but we're going to push it through. Um, and uh-huh. that will and then it's eventually, like the foundation. Yeah. And then they'll get to the next thing. And this group, the American League also. Um, so the American League was like, let's just push it through and get the foundation. And like they stayed. Yes. And they stayed okay. like connected to the Republican Party. And um, spoiler, like that didn't happen. So they were wrong. But whatever. Um, they believed in like state by state reform and doing it that way. Um, and they also included men in their ranks. Okay. Now, the National Women's Suffrage Association is interestingly the one that we know more of. So, OK, so the American one, it was founded by Lucy Stone, Henry Blackwell and Julia Ward Howe, who are three names that I feel like I've loosely heard of only because I've like of this podcast kind of. Mm-hmm. But I never really heard of them. And the National Women's Suffrage Association was led by Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony. Okay. So that is the I one that went to high school with a girl named Lucy Stone really yeah weird um so that is it's interesting like that's the that's the side of this historical argument that got written about and it's also interesting because that is the side that has said some like very said some like very problematically racist stuff like stuff that was like where they would argue with frederick Douglass, like you wouldn't want to trade places with us blah 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 and then frederick Mm -hmm. Douglass would be like well you guys don't have a kkk against you and they were like well men are kind of the kkk because like men are taking our children away and like so it was like yeah it's also i mean even from a foundational standpoint it's like when you're comparing suffering it's always a horrible idea no it's a horrible idea and 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 i can I understand the argument for being like, we don't want this to like, we want to include women in this, in the 15th amendment Uh and the other side being like, no, we don't think it'll pass if we do. And then there's just like a lot of ugliness that comes out of that. And I don't necessarily want to like excuse these people. And I know that I probably have a blind spot for them. So like, I get that, but I, I guess I just feel like in the context historically, like, that what they said the things they said were they were wrong but also in some Who, ways like which one the national league was wrong. the national league like said well i don't know that they were i mean they were like kind of historically right like it, it took you know the 15th amendment passed in 1870 and women didn't get now okay i understand white women didn't get suffrage until 1920 now right. black women and black men didn't they had they had methods that disenfranchised them for much much right. later but um and, and the puerto today. rican women still can't vote you know right. <laughs> um so or you know vote nationally in whatever within the united states so so yeah like i get that but in terms of just like an amendment that said who can vote mm-hmm. it did take 50 more years and so there's historically in retrospect you're like well maybe they had a good point like maybe we should have tried to push it all at once but maybe it wouldn't but then also maybe it wouldn't have gone through right. so we and just then don't you wouldn't know. have gotten anybody right so it's i can understand both sides and you'll never know like who is right or whatever it's like but. how obamacare is just like a framework it's like the foundation yeah and a lot something. of people argue like oh he should have gone full-fledged for single payer because that was our one opportunity or and now Medicare. we never will right. have it so then, well that's you can thank joe lieberman but <laughs> yeah, not Lieberman. having a public option, but but yeah, it's and it, I mean it's the same way that Social Security started too. Social Security didn't start as like this thing that we all pay into and then we all get when we retire. It was like specific. I think it was like for widows only, or like something like that's not right. But it was for like one specific group, and they were like, "No, we're passing this because we just need the foundation of it, and yeah. then we can improve upon it." Yeah, yeah. Like I remember when. The, on election day 2016 a lot of people were put, putting their i voted sticker on i think it was either susan b anthony or elizabeth katie stanton's like gravestone uh-huh. and there was a lot of like people online who were like hey like they said really shitty things about black yeah. men um which i didn't hadn't which i had never learned about which is fucked up yeah you know like i we should we should know that like all these figures are problematic and that a lot of things they said were wrong i i i just also uh, i do understand where the motivation was coming from, but I right. don't agree with the things that they said out of anger or whatever, out of ignorance and anger. Yeah. Um, 
as a result of that. But anyway, so it's kind of an interesting argument and, and, and it does reflect a lot of like political arguments from history and today that are like, do you go fully extreme or do you go with some sort of like compromise and hope to build upon it? Mm -hmm. And it's a hard question. I mean, it just really is. So anyway, depends on the time and depends on what else is going on. And and we never, and it's like you, and, and it's hard to tell like, which is better because there's no way to go back and try it the other way. Like you just don't know. Yeah. Well, it's like a, it's like how the equal rights amendment didn't pass. Mm hmm. And like, I mean, maybe it's not the same. Wait, the Equal Rights Amendment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was an amendment. I forget when. And I feel like we've covered it a little bit. And I kind of like I we haven't like done a oh, deep the dive. Lim- yeah. The, but the, there was uh, another yeah. amendment. I was thinking of the Civil Rights Amendment. N- yeah. No, no, no. But there was like another oh, amendment, amendment that like yeah. didn't pass. And it was very close. Yes, 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 yes. And yes. I wonder. And we maybe. Do it, that. Maybe we should just do the Equal Rights Amendment. Maybe. <laughs> and like, maybe it's not worth it. Like, you kind of have to ask like. Yeah, like what what do you compromise? Like what's worth compromising in order to get this thing? Mm-hmm. But like Yeah, I don't know. It's like an it's an interesting question. Yeah. Of like of like where do you draw a line? Mm-hmm. And where do you acknowledge like no, I know this isn't progressive enough for what the right thing is, but I know that it's progressive enough to pass. Yeah. It's an, it, I mean, yeah, yeah it's an I don't interesting know. question. It's, a, it's an interesting historical argument and it's sort of fraught with, you know, it's, it's, it's fraught with a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I think that there, yeah, I'm having a thought that's probably problematic. So maybe I just won't say it, but hold on to it and think <laughs> about it and then yeah, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. Um, Anyway, well, maybe it's not. Whatever. I appreciate I that you acknowledge it. What I mean, I mean, maybe it is. But I also we can feel edit like, it out if it's terrible. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Whatever. No, let's talk to, about it. I mean, I guess my thought too is that it's like, well, I think just I think that people, a lot of people, have blind spots for things that are not um, affecting them, and Certainly. I think that that's very clear in a lot of ways. And like, I think that I I. I I think in the, in the limited research that I did, so again, this is like very unsourced kind of, so maybe that's not fair to say, but it did feel that like between Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Frederick Douglass, like the two of them just didn't, weren't able to see, like they both would have supported the other, but they also were so deeply entrenched in their own struggle that it was hard for them to necessarily mm-hmm. see the other struggle. And by compare, like you said, by comparing suffering, they were unable to see the suffering of each other. Yeah. And I, and I, and I guess basically what I'm saying is I think maybe it went both ways. And I think that what I worry that would be problematic is that people wouldn't think that that's fair, but I guess I, yeah, I, I think it is. I think it is fair to think that there were, they were both suffering and there's different, it's very different and maybe one's worse than the other, but again, Mm -hmm. it's like very different to quantify that. And when it comes down to it, neither of them had suffrage and right. They both wanted it and they both deserved it. And so that was, the reality you know yeah no I and again I mean I probably have very similar blind spots to you as a fellow uh white woman but yeah I mean I think male privilege is real so is white privilege yeah and they each had their own yeah um and by turning to each other you're ignoring the real issue yeah so it was very messy anyway so the way lucretia plays into this <laughs> poor lucretia she, she becomes like the head of this like ori- the original oh, yeah. association that's how we got here and she like they start splitting up and she's kind of like what she's like no I, lo- mm-hmm. I love you both she's like she tries to like kind of play the referee meanwhile in 1868 her husband passes away which is very sad oh. but she does not do well as the referee and like her, she has this like sort of some some kind of stomach disease or something. It gets worse, so mm. she kind of like fades away from that organization. Like just kind of like gets lost in the shuffle of all the craziness. It sounds like she was like, ooh, excuse me, not one to like yeah, girl. take sides or whatever. Um. Anyway, in 1868, uh, she forms she co-founded something called the Free Religious Association in Boston, which was this like super hippy dippy. Like she stayed technically Quaker, but she also created this thing called the Free Religious Association, which was quote unquote a spiritual anti-slavery society. Slavery had already been abolished, and um, also quote uh, to emancipate religion from the dogmatic traditions it had previously been bound to. Ah. It was anti-organized religion, anti-supernaturalism. It was basically just like 
religion for like people who it's like for humanitarian she uh-huh. just was like very cool She's and like, like had really logic, progressive views. You guys. <laughs> yeah um and at eight at 85 year old years old she gave her last speech at the 13th anniversary of the seneca falls convention she lived a long time yeah, she lived till yeah in the 1800s in, to live into your 80s yeah it's nuts she lived a super long time um yeah she lived until 1880 and she was born in 1793 so was that like 87 88 years or something yeah (laughs) almost 90 so yeah the only math i can do is that i'm a glass and a half of wine and hell yeah baby i'm glad you're going second (laughs) um so that was lucretia mott um she was a uh, a a very woke lady from the 1800s (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um and it's it also those moments are like learning about her you're like cause sometimes you think of like history and you're like oh it was a different time like blah 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 and then you're like yes. well there were people who I, saw Molly, I, I and think it's about hard that. i think about that all the time of like yeah i mean i who knows like i'm sure there's things that i'm wrong about like that i'll learn in history and i don't know that i want to be judged as harshly about but like but it's also like damn there's some no, people who course. just see who just are have pure vision they don't need yeah. 2020 they don't need hindsight they already have 2020 like they, they yes. just see through the muck and the mire and they can see injustice and that's similar to um yuri was it koshiyama from yeah. last week like just someone who can like it doesn't matter what my struggle is i see everyone else's struggle and i and i and i'm gonna fight for my own but i'm gonna mm-hmm. fight for everyone else's too yeah and i think that i did two women in these last two episodes who are who are like that yeah so. a rising something lifts all something. rising boats rising, rising tides lift all boats. boats yeah it is I, I i had this conversation with somebody recently about how like you know these like this idea of being a product of your environment which of course we all are to some extent mm-hmm. um but how like even even during like colonial time even during like Um, like when Christopher Columbus came over and shit, there were people who were like, Hey, maybe we shouldn't rape and pillage all of these fucking villages. And they were like, and who you whack bro. Yeah. And who like left and who lived with the native, like there are people who are saying this is wrong. And I know it's like very easy in hindsight to be like, this is wrong. And then some, whoever I was talking to was like, yeah, but they didn't know at the time. And it's like, no, there were people who knew at the time yeah, who knew that this was wrong. And it's like, we, so tough. we are products of our environment, but we also have the ability to step outside and use our brains and think logically. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so no. she was one of those people where you're like, damn, like everything, in her, nothing in her life necessary. I mean, I guess she was raised Quaker, so that, that helps, but you know, not all Quakers were like that. Not hashtag not all Quakers. Not hashtag not all Quakers, you know? (laughs) Or that like devoted to the causes and stuff like that. So anyway, that's Lucretia Mott. Oh, my sources were um definitely some Wikipedia, especially for all that stuff about the feminist divide. I was like, all right, I just need a brief history of this. Um history dot com, biography dot com, and women's history blog dot com. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, do you wanna take a break and eat? Oh, sure. And we're back. We're back. We're actually back this time. Oh, we man. I feel so much better. Uh, we just ate some red beans and rice by yeah, Chef by Sh- Shacky. Dan Shacky. So good. So good. Okay. You ready for this? Yes. All right. This is, a, this is more of a villain story. Ooh. So settle in. Get ready. All right. Griselda Blanco. Ooh was born February 15th, 1943 in Cartagena, Colombia. And then when she was three years old, she and her mom moved to Medellin, Colombia, which was infamously violent, Mm -hmm. Um, not just because of the drug trade, which I think like escalated later, but also because um, Colombia had a 10 year civil war from 1948 to 1958 that killed approximately two to 300,000 people. Um, there was a quote from an article that I saw that said, um, murder was so rampant that kids would amuse themselves by digging holes in the ground to bury the bodies that littered the city's filthy streets. Oh, my God. Um, her mom was abusive. And according to legend, 
when Griselda was 11, she and some friends kidnapped a 10 year old boy who was from a rich family, um, held him for ransom. And when the family didn't pay because they were like, you guys haven't even hit puberty yet, like, fuck off. Um, Griselda was the one who, on a dare, shot and killed this boy. Damn. Uh, But there's no proof that that happened. Mm. It's all (coughs) conjecture. It's all conjecture. A lot of this, like, this documentary that I watched, a lot of them, like, believe that that didn't actually happen. But the story itself is something that she embraced because mm. it sort of like set the stage yeah, for what told she wanted to fuck with her. Exactly. Um, of like, this is me at 11. Yeah. Um, what she for sure did do was she would pickpocket to make ends meet, which like fine, whatever. And then when she was 14, she became a sex worker. Um she met a guy named Carlos Trujillo. It's like your typical love story, right? Like they fall for each other, falsify some documents, move to Queens, <laughs> falsify more documents to smuggle other Colombians into the U.S., have three sons, and Carlos dies under mysterious circumstances. Perfect. Just like a real Disney. Yeah, a real meet cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so Griselda remarries. Um, she marries this guy named Alberto Bravo. And at first they are just smuggling in pot, which like, whatever, you know? Yeah. No big deal. Um, but according to one source, Griselda didn't like how bulky it was. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess it's like, it doesn't occupy space efficiently. That's true. Um, and very airy. Yeah, for sure. You need like a like and also you can't like, be compressed really. Mm-hmm. For sure. You can't like stack it on top of each other. Otherwise, Not in the days of like vape oils and stuff. <laughs> totally. And like nobody wants the swag, you know, yeah. or the um, I think that's what it's it? called, isn't it? Swag is bad weed. What's it called when it's oh, all the, just the dust? Or I don't what, know. The, I'm not enough of a weed person. I f- okay. It the leftovers. Matter. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I just had it. doesn't matter. Um. I see. I don't even know enough to. I'm like. I'm yeah. just. I only wow. do legal things. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, legal in California. <laughs> okay. So she is like, maybe we should be smuggling cocaine instead. Um. And okay. So this is before Pablo Escobar happened. Like this is before he came gotcha. up. Um. And it was before cocaine was even really super popular. Um, Griselda just sort of like saw it coming. Mm. Um, so she was, she was just like, I feel like there's going to be a market for this. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh, this is a drug that makes you feel invincible. I feel like uh-huh. it's going to be a hit. <laughs> well, and also apparently at the time, people. She's like an agent for drugs. She's like, yeah, this one's a little too sad. This, yeah. one, this is a star. <laughs> this one is just right. <laughs> she's found the Goldilocks drug. I'd love to sign you cocaine. <laughs> well, also at first people didn't think that it was bad for you. <clears throat> and yeah. they didn't think that it was addictive. They just is that thought, like what we think of marijuana now? <laughs> maybe. Um, it's like what we used to think about cigarettes. It's what we used, I don't think I don't know if it's necessarily what we think about marijuana. I do think it's what we think about vaping. Yeah. Um, I have a cousin. I mean, who it does, is kind of what we think about marijuana, too. It is what we think about marijuana. I do kind of like I don't know, I don't know. if I like stop smoking weed. I don't really like feel a physical craving for it at all. Yeah, I but I know some people who do. Yeah, maybe it just depends on who like you it, are. like a lot of things. Like a lot of people do cocaine and they don't become addicted to it. A lot of people smoke cigarettes and they don't become addicted to it. That's a good point. I don't know if you regularly smoke cigarettes. Addicted. Like I'll like take like a month break from weed sometimes just because I just don't feel like it. No, I know, but I feel like some people just have like addictive personalities to certain things. That's fair. I don't know. I'm just playing devil's advocate. I don't no, know. you're There's right. no science behind any of this. You're no, you're a hundred percent right. Um, about that part at least. Anyway, I, I just don't know. But like, she's like, okay, well, people will. Yeah, get well, she's just it. like, okay, well, this. <laughs> she is knew. Too. I know. Um. So, um, she starts smuggling in cocaine from Colombia, mostly using women because nobody suspects us. Mm-hmm. There was a lot, like in this documentary that I watched. There was a lot of like, we just couldn't imagine that a woman could do these huh. things. Huh. And like, she, there was somebody else who was like, she broke the glass ceiling on like being a villain. And it's like, 
Okay. Like, like women can be awful too. We can. It reminds me of Kate Willett's joke about like the glass gutter. That's like women can't be as disgusting as men. She's like, there's a glass. She's like, I have the joke that's like, like we have a glass. There's a glass ceiling, but there's also a glass gutter. Huh. <laughs> she's so funny. Yeah, she's so funny. Mm. Okay, so she's using women to smuggle it in. Watch Maria Full of Grace. It's a very upsetting movie, but it basically deals with that of like these women who. Mm. Um, but is it about her or is it just about in general how women do No, that? it's just in general. And I think it's it's much more modern. Oh, yeah. Um, and they put women in their vaginas, right? I mean, they, they women, swallow they put, it. Uh, they don't cocaine. put it in their... They, oh, they swallow it in uh-huh. like a balloon. They swallow these balloons um, and then pass it. Um, but then if they don't, they die. If they don't, they die. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's what they would do. And like this seems so obvious now, but Griselda was the first person to do this, where they would take the shipping containers and hollow them out and hide the drugs in the shipping containers. Yeah. Um, so like custom agents were trained to look inside the containers and look for like hidden spots, but they weren't trained to see the, con- the containers themselves as the hiding spot. Yeah. So she's the first person who did that. Yeah. Um, she becomes known as the godmother. Um, and then in 1975, the DEA is like, okay, enough. Uh, they team up with, uh, NYPD. They call it Operation Banshee. And they seize 150 kilos of cocaine that were hers that you're like that she was in charge of or mm-hmm. whatever, um, which at the time was a record for the largest cocaine seizure, 150 Whoa. kilos of cocaine. And I didn't know what that meant. So for comparison in 2016, um, the coast card coast guard sees 26.5 tons of cocaine. Whoa. And one ton is 900 kilos. Wow. Or like 907. It's- a good party yeah (laughs) Yeah. but so at the time like 150 kilos which is like i don't know uh one fifth of a ton it's like Um, a normal day for charlie sheen (laughs) he has tiger blood it's not his fault okay so (laughs) dragon energy yeah um yeah that too Okay, so Griselda and her husband, Alberto, and like 30 of the people who were helping them are indicted. And Griselda is like, okay, bye. (laughs) And she and Alberto go back to Colombia. (laughs) And they're just like, we're not dealing with this. Um, While they're there, they like get into this huge fight one night. Um, They're in a nightclub in Bogota. And they get into this fight because millions of dollars are missing from the books. Mm -mm. And Griselda suspects Alberto of trying to steal from her. Wow. And so she pulls out a pistol. So Alberto pulls out an Uzi. (gasps) And they get into a gun battle at this nightclub. Jesus Christ. Um, She was shot in the stomach but lived um alberto and six bodyguards were killed (laughs) and at this point she becomes known as the black widow Mm. in addition to the godmother um she's just fucking she does not give a shit like if you come between her and her money yeah don't later days dude okay so in 1977 it's like two years later after she kills her husband. Um, she's like, you know what? Like, I'm done with Columbia. Just like being here. I want to go back to the U.S. But the New York winters were terrible. Yeah. I'm going to Miami. Um, and this is before. Bienvenidos a Miami. Yeah. And like Miami was becoming a cocaine, like the <laughs> cocaine city that it became. Yeah. But it wasn't quite there yet. <clears throat> yeah. Like, like the skyline didn't exist yet Mm. um which is so crazy i mean a lot so some of this research came from cocaine cowboys that documentary Mm. which like what because they talk about how miami is basically like a city that like it used to be just like this like small city Mm -hmm. and then cocaine happened and there were all of these drug dealers who would basically take all of their money and put it in the banks. And mm-hmm. then the banks would lend that money to businesses. Mm-hmm. And that's how, like, the whole Miami skyline is because of cocaine money. Oh, my God. It's 
pretty crazy. Um, but okay, so Griselda marries this guy named uh, Dario Sepulveda. Sepulveda. That's her third husband. Um, they have a... Oh, did I mention? She had she had three sons with her first husband um, who died under... Yeah, okay. Um, and then so she and Dario have a, a fourth son named... Uh, she names him Michael Corleone, which I guess is a Godfather reference. Yeah. Um, I never saw it, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, but, you know, it's just, like, nice that this, like... She's, like, married and has kids and also this, like, cocaine business. This because like, like, the old American domestic life. It's just, like, women can have it all. Yeah. You know? Like, they can. So she sets up her cocaine operation again. And this time, she's just, like, no prisoners. Like, we're not fucking around anymore. Um, she's so ruthless in her business dealings that the other drug dealers in Miami got together to try to kill her. Um, she survived six different assassination attempts. Oh, my God. And then Miami became the murder capital of the country. And Griselda is a huge part of that. She's ordering so many hits. On all the people that are trying to kill her? On all the people who are trying to kill her. Um, if somebody owes her money and doesn't pay, she orders them killed. If she owes somebody money and she doesn't want to pay, she orders them killed. Wow. Um, she would also order that all of the witnesses be killed. So, uh, like, literally anybody nearby wow. would also be killed, wow. which included children. She there was uh, she like would just kill children. She just didn't care anybody. Oh my God. There was one story about like because she she wasn't the one going in and doing this. She obviously like had hitmen. Yeah. There was a story of how like and I won't get like too into the details, but there was like a family that lived in this house. It was like a mom, dad, and like three kids or whatever. And the hitmen get. And by the way, I just want to be like real clear. One, I'm not trying to glorify her at all. Um, I just think and you know it's like a whole you know women can be evil and I kind of want to explore that a little bit Mm -hmm. um but uh yeah so and also like I try not to do like murderers but she's much more than that yeah she she like I know it sounds crazy but she pioneered a lot of techniques in like the drug trade Uh uh-huh yeah um so so like she ordered so they, it was a mom, dad. They had three little kids. She ordered the whole family killed. Oh, my God. And the hitmen went in. They killed the parents. And then one of them was getting ready to kill the kids. And her main hitman pulled a gun on the other hitman and was like, do not kill those kids. And so they returned. And they didn't. Um, and so they came back to Griselda and she was like, did you kill everybody? And he was like, no, we didn't kill the kids. And she was incredibly angry. Oh my God. So like, that's who she is. Wow. Um, but also like apparently a very loving mom. So I don't know. People have blind spots. Yeah. (laughs) It's just the hypocrisy. (laughs) But I, you know, there are these like detectives being interviewed who are like, yeah, if you were like playing, like begging for your life and saying like, I have a family, she was not the one to do that to. No, she didn't give a fuck. So, um, yeah, it's just like, she was so indiscriminate and cold about who she, who was killed. Um, and that here's another method that she pioneered. Um, the method of drive-by shootings on the back of a motorcycle was her. Was That was her. Oh, wow. So you have one person driving, That's one person on the back. Yeah. Um, but that wasn't done before her. <laughs> That's nuts. And once, like, rival gangs saw really? that, they were like, An innovator oh. of evil. <laughs> yeah. They were like, great idea. Yeah. Um, and they would do this. They became like very brazen. They would do this in the middle of the day, in the middle of traffic. Griselda was also taking in eight to ten million dollars in revenue a week. What? And so she is living it up. She would drop thousands of dollars in one night out at a club. Uh, she owned diamonds that had belonged to Ava Perone. 
She had a Whoa. tea set that had belonged to the Queen of England. She com- <laughs> doesn't seem like a tea drinker to me. No, <laughs> right? Maybe it was Yerba Mate. Yeah, maybe. Um, she commissioned a bronze statue of herself. Whoa. Which, like, Lord grant me the confidence of a female drug dealer yes. who <laughs> is just like, yeah, make me a statue. Yes. Um, she had all of these like luxury cars and then she started hosting these cocaine fueled orgies that honestly like sound very fun and not <laughs> shaming at all. It's just like nice when somebody's like, no, like sex is pleasurable. Um, but fucked up. Also, she became, there was like one guy who said like she became increasingly paranoid and then another guy who was like, was it paranoid or was it common sense? Yeah. Because she's fucking... Also Everyone she, wants yeah. her dead. Mm-hmm. She had a German shepherd named Hitler. Oh, wow. That's she's cute. got a lot going on. That's this cute. One. Um, and then in 1983, her husband Daria leaves her and kidnaps Michael to come live with him in Colombia. Mm. And Griselda was like, <laughs> I'm sorry, have you met me? Oh, no. Uh, so she has her husband killed and brings Michael back. Perfect. So, okay. Here's the, well, not here's the problem. There are a lot of problems in this. But here's the problem for Griselda. She gets to be way too high profile. Right. Because, yeah. like, her name is out there. She is not discreet. She's being brazen, yeah. Yeah. And... Everybody is out for her, right? Like the DEA, rival drug dealers, people whose family members she had killed. Yeah. Like everybody wants this bitch. Yeah. So she puts her three oldest sons in charge of the business. I think it was like one was in New York, one was in San Francisco, and one was in LA. Mm. So they had every, you know, each Major coast. city. Yeah. Um, and Griselda and Michael go to California to live with Griselda's mom. And so they're just like chilling and hanging out, like whatever. She enrolls Michael in school. And then in 1985, somebody uh, in her circle, we don't know who, uh, it was like somebody who was already in prison serving a sentence for drug smuggling and who like wasn't high up, but like turned on her like he knew oh, her shit. address damn and so bound to happen eventually right so she's arrested while she's at home uh reading the bible which is <laughs> like an interest that's like ugh, the hypocrisy mm-hmm. um and she was still she still had this warrant out for her in new york from operation banshee for mm. dealing cocaine um and so they because they didn't have her on anything else, really. Yeah, they like she was pretty good at her job, even though she was brazen about it. But she was like pretty good at covering her tracks. Yeah, like. like she was smart. She knew how to protect herself. Yeah, for but a while. So they send her to New York. Um, she's convicted, but it's just on these like drug smuggling charges. Yeah. So the maximum sentence was fifteen years, which she gets. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. Uh, in Miami, her head hitman, the one who was like, don't kill those kids, Mm -hmm. um, was arrested. And so he turns on her too. Yeah. And then in 1994, she's extradited to Miami on these murder charges. And I think it's only three of them that they can actually like Like prove. prove. Yeah. And that he's willing to testify against her on. Yeah. But he's like... I'm going to testify, like, whatever. And Miami is, like, great. Like, they spend, I think it was, like, three years from the time that she was extradited. They spent three years, like, getting all these witnesses and getting their Uh statements and, like, (laughs) getting everything ready. Um, They're going to, like, they're just, like, so confident. And they're, like, we're going to get her, like, I think it was, like, either a life sentence or death penalty. Wow. Because it's Florida. Um, So they do all this work. And then... It comes out that the hitman who was going to testify against her had been having phone sex with three of the state attorney's secretaries. And so suddenly he's not credible anymore. 
Um, and uh, there is like there are some conspiracy theories that Griselda is the one who planned all of that. Like once she found out that he was going to testify against her, f- convinced him to do this so that sh- his testimony wouldn't be credible anymore. Whoa. Um, but there's, I mean, again, no proof, but. So Griselda Blanco then agrees to a plea deal and she just gets a 10 year sentence. So that's 15 years in New York and, tw- and 10 years in Miami. Uh-huh. Um, so her three oldest sons are deported back to Colombia and almost immediately killed. Wow. Um, and then in 2004, Griselda has served her 10 years. So she gets out. And then is also deported back to Colombia, and like the cops that uh, that were interviewed were like, we assumed she would be killed also as soon as she got back, Mm-mm. but she was not, um, probably because she had outlived mo- like prison kept her safe, yeah, and she had outlived most of the people who, who would have come for wanted her, her dead, mm-hmm. yeah. So, mm. and like this thing that I watched, like they were pissed they like w- clearly were just like she shouldn't get to just like keep living her life um and then the last time she was seen um f- was in 2007 uh at an airport in bogota and so like U- u.s officials just like didn't know what happened to her uh th- and and they like assumed that she was dead but didn't know mm. But then in 2012, it turns out she was alive the whole time. Wow. Until two, September 2012, uh, Griselda was leaving the butcher shop with $150 worth of meat. Um, a middle-aged man on a motorcycle. Uh, and I guess it was two men on a motorcycle, one in the back, one in the front. Mm. Uh, rode up. He climbed off. He shot her twice in the head and then calmly got back on the bike. That was and in Bogota? Rode. Yeah. Wow. Uh, or maybe, I don't know if it was in Bogota. But it was in Colombia. But it was in, it was in Colombia. Um, wow. Which is like the irony of being killed by the technique that you created. created. Yeah. Um, one well, it sounds like they didn't even do it the same exact way. Because No, because like, he like got off the bike yeah. and was like, I want. And nobody, I think like wherever she went back to in Colombia, like people didn't realize who she was. She just yeah. kept a super low pro- profile. Yeah. Um, How old was she when she died? <laughs> she was 69. Uh, <laughs> which is just like. I mean, I know that's like a very immature joke, but it's so funny to me that this woman who like lived a life of debauchery yeah, <laughs> died yeah. at 69, <laughs> who was like infamous for her orgies. Yeah, that's really funny. <laughs> um, one witness said uh, about the hitman, he was a professional. It was a vengeance from the past. Mm. So just like very clear. Um Griselda was at the time of her death was believed to be responsible for 250 murders. Whoa. Um, as for Michael, he is a self-described entrepreneur. He still lives in the U S. Um, he lives in Miami. Uh, I forget where, how much of his money. I looked him up on Facebook. Um, (laughs) he is the owner of a company called pure Blanco, which is quote, a billionaire lifestyle brand um, created by <sighs> Michael Corleone Blanco, the proud son of Griselda Blanco, a.k.a. the queen of cocaine. Wow. Um, it's basically just like a lot of graphic tees that look the, like they are borderline copyright infringement of The Simpsons. Wow. Is she... I mean, I guess I wonder how much of her money he got. Probably like whatever they could. That's sm- a good question. I was like smuggle. trying to figure it out. And then I'm sure she was smart enough to like put her money in like legal loophole places. To well, keep it. and also like property. I yeah. think like I saw a thing that was like the FBI really wanted to seize all of her property. But I think it went to him like her mansions and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. So he probably has some of it. Oh, Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure she figured out some trust fund shit for him. Yeah. Cuz she was smart. Like Yeah, she was smart. She was evil, Damn. but she whatever so that's evil that's the one means, son that survived. That's the one son that survived. And as I mean, as far as we know, 
is not in the drug trade. His company is but, literally called Pure Blanco. <laughs> yeah, Pure Blanco. It's like oh, a cocaine reference with yeah. his last name. Yeah. And he call yeah, it's it's not even like proud son of Griselda Blanco, aka the godmother. It's the, the queen of cocaine. cocaine. He is not ashamed, just like his mama. And, no, that is it, a really crazy lady. I can't believe it. That seems like something they should do, like a Netflix series about or something. There, are, yeah, there are only there's some like HBO documentaries, um, and then I think there was like some Lifetime thing coming out. Oh with, yeah, like, that makes like, sense. But, but there no, could be a really be, good show about that. Should this. be like this is nuts. Yeah, it should there sh- it should be Narcos, but just with yeah. her Narcos. <laughs> Narcos. <laughs> well, and like some things said that like Pablo Escobar was a like a product of her. Like he like she was his mentor. Oh wow. Other ones were just like no, she just paved the way for him. Yeah, he just learned from her. Right. Things. But like wow. But yeah, she came before him. And I As had every like every woman should. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But I had like never like I had just seen like a couple of reference to her in Cocaine Cowboys. I like didn't know I don't know what Cocaine Cowboys is. It's, it's a like, documentary. Ooh. There are two it's a two parter documentary. On where? Um I think it's mo- it's on Miami because like that's No 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 no. Like where can you watch it? Oh, I think it? HBO. Oh. Um cuz I think that's like what they called uh, those like hench, the her like hitman mm. hitmen were called the cocaine cowboys because they just like were basically their own police force, right? <laughs> right. In Miami, damn, just running shit. Damn, that was a crazy one, right? I just I I don't know. There's like, and again, like I want to be really careful that I'm not glorifying her because it's like she is responsible for so many murders i mean look so much tragedy the biggest villains in history men or women there's something to be said about them i mean even Mm -hmm. hitler you're like he was literally what we define as like pure evil in human form but like he was good at it Mm -hmm. he you can't say he wasn't good at it and you know there were other things he was good at too right he was a great speaker he was he was very organized like he he was convincing you know and it sounds like she like yeah she was literally killed to uh, responsible for the deaths of 250 people at least at least but she was she has like it's it's like man if she put all those like savvy business skills towards something that was like productive in society yes. it would have been great but well, she was born in Colombia and this is like the shit she was given yeah. and I don't know and you wonder like what would have happened if she hadn't been because there were some people who were like I'm and I mean I think this is like a detective like a cop thing mm-hmm. I think like and I have respect for some of them but I think there is a tendency to try to like oversimplify like these um criminals and i understand Mm -hmm. from their standpoint it's like yeah you can't have too much sympathy for people like this but like she wasn't i i don't believe that she was just born bad i believe that she was born into a very violent time and environment and on top of that had an abusive mother and i think she was also sexually abused like I don't think you become a sex worker at 14 because everything's peachy keen yeah and it's like you know there are people who have those circumstances who don't go on to become murderous totally it's not an excuse dealers but it's it's sort of it explains it a little bit and and yeah I like like you said I think it's important that that we highlight women who are who who change the course of history but maybe not in a positive way you know yeah and like i was thinking about this too recently of like because you know like maybe trump maybe like the korean war is like officially about to end and like whether or not trump deserves any credit for that i mean that's like a whole other podcast but like and i'm not well read enough to know anything but i was thinking about like in terms of how history views this presidency and how like bad people sometimes do good things Mm -hmm. and like you know it's the it's like a very cliche thing but it's about how people are like you know in Italy Mussolini made the trains run on time Mm. and it's like yeah there can be positive things that come from horrible rulers Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that they're good and it doesn't outweigh the bad yeah and she to me sort of like 
exemplifies that. Well, I don't know what the positive thing that she... I mean, apparently she was a good mom. Um, I mean, according to, like, her... Like, she was, like, a family woman. And, like, yeah, I mean... Sure, She's but, not as complicated as other figures, yeah. for sure. I mean, that's... Because, like, I feel like almost... There's a lot of, like, evil people who, like... I mean, Trump loves his family, too, you know? That's not... Right. That's But, yeah. like, that's kind of my point, is, like... Also, that's I don't the think one... He, that's the one... Yeah, well, that's I think he just arguable. loves Ivanka. Yeah. But that's the one... But, well, there was that, like, one article... I mean, granted, it was Maggie Haberman, who, like, where is she... Where is her side? But there was that one article, like, a while ago about how he, like, lit up when his grandson came in the room and... I mean, who knows? I mean, he probably loves his kids and family because of mm-hmm. his own ego and he sees himself in them. Yeah. But whatever. Which, I'm, and she might have also, like, Griselda, like, like, that might be the only reason yeah. why she loved her kids I just feel too. Like, 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 loving your family is, like, not compared to, like, other, yeah. No, of course not. But, no, but she's, got, she, yeah, but her circumstances were nuts and... Because I, like, still found myself something. kind of rooting for her. Despite well, yeah, it's my, the anti-hero thing. And that's the thing that you see a lot in those like tv shows that were like very popular for a long time the soprano the breaking Uh bad the um what's the other big one always Um, sunny in philadelphia (laughs) yeah i guess so but all these like shows where it's just these these male anti-heroes mad men yeah mad men exactly and you know it was was less likely to have a female one i mean you had uh weeds with mary louise parker Uh which is you know which the first season is amazing the first two seasons are really good yeah um so but it was rarer to have a female anti-hero you uh-huh. know? and i think that it's important that those exist too because people are complicated and you do sympathize with people even with like yeah. dexter right that's the other big one. right yeah. oh yeah yeah and like so. without recognizing the complicated female anti-hero you end up just defending sarah huckabee sanders right. all the time yeah yeah it's like no she's an anti-hero she's not a hero she's just anti yeah 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 i mean she's <laughs> anti aunt she and, and uh, lydia um <laughs> uh, it all comes back all this is going to be old news by the time yeah. this podcast comes out <laughs> anyway well this was a great episode i need to go it's home now yeah, yeah, um <laughs> do you have any dates uh i think i do but i don't know let's look um i have oh no okay rate review subscribe this podcast if you please haven't do. already please tell a friend um i will be enemy. at hank saloon on wednesday may 9th at 8 p.m uh, i think that might be the next the next thing that's coming up on this one. Oh, and we have all female reboot may 19th at the tank i don't know what time that show is probably 9 30 probably not um yes please come to that it's so fun it's like my favorite thing it's so good um oh and i'm on something on what is this i'm on oh the bingo comedy show that you're on that too monday may 14th at the rochard at Uh, 8 30 yeah um okay wednesday may 9th i will be at pet shop in jersey city at eight o'clock uh saturday may 12th at eight o'clock i'll be at the creek in the cave um monday may 14th again with molly at the rochard and all female reboot on may 19th at 9 30 also you guys don't forget sunday is mother's day oh yeah uh on the 13th so just like a heads up <laughs> so and that that's it is our fucking podcast all right this week. so keep Ke- making history, history. And don't you ever say that she was well behaved